All right, welcome to the collection tour of 2022. I did two previously. You guys really seem to have enjoyed them. So I thought I'd go over it today again. This is, would be uh, officially collection tour number three. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're not only going to go over animals, I'm currently keeping over 90 animals at this point between adults and babies. And keep in mind, only three of those animals are ball pythons. So this is not your average collection tour where it's all ball pythons. This is mostly arboreals. And I think a lot of stuff that most of you or many of you probably haven't seen actually live. So I'm excited to show you a lot of those animals that are more rare in US collections. My snake room number two. So we're gonna go over not only animals, we're gonna go over equipment, we're gonna go over substrates, we'll go over incubators, racks, and all the things that you guys seem to ask me the most questions about. And see if I can answer a lot of those for you and hopefully make your lives a little bit easier. But stick with me, it's gonna be a long tour. I'm gonna to go as quickly as I possibly can and throw as much information as I possibly can at you as fast as I can. So um, stay tuned. Hey guys, are you at the Tinley Show, the NERBC show in Tinley? Because I'm here, as you're watching this, my plane either just landed or about to land. So if you're here and you see me walking around, by all means, come up and say hello. I would love to meet you. And of course, uh, I want you to tell me the thing you hate most about Carpondros. Uh, welcome to video number 40, everybody. And I am excited to get into our full room tour uh, today. I'm going to go over equipment, as I mentioned, and all the animals as well. Um, it's the room. It's the 2022 room tour. Lots have changed, so a lot has changed. So I'm excited to show you all those changes. Before we get into that, however, um, again, I haven't been making videos. And honey, tell everybody why I have not been making videos. You've been slacking off. No, I haven't been slacking off. I've been busy. Why would you tell them that? I've been busy, guys. I've been, you know what I did this year? I produced 65 babies this year between uh, Savu pythons and different uh, carpet pythons and everything, just establishing 65 babies between having a full-time job and a family. I haven't even seen my daughter, honey. How old is our daughter now, even? I don't even, does she ever ask about me or anything? When you're coming home, dad, I don't know when, but we'll get together then. Um, I haven't even set up my fish tank, guys. It's been sitting like this for months. I haven't even had time to mess with it. I've been talking about this discus tank forever. So I got to get that going. I just got to get my life back on schedule. But thank God you guys have been so wonderful with me. You've been buying up all my babies as quickly as I could post them on Morph Market. So thank you for that. And I'm getting back into the groove of things and making videos more frequently. Uh, very quickly, Helix thermostats. Do you have them that you're not using? I could still use a few more of those. If you have them, um, please reach out to me at Gary at gsreptiles.com. Um, in addition to today's video of the full room tour, also, oh, listen, a dream box of animals has arrived here. Um, I'm not going to tell you what they are. I'm just going to tell you that they're green. There are four of them, and uh, I'm sure they're a dream for most of you out there. They're definitely a dream for me, so I'm excited to show you that unboxing as well. And with all that said, let's um, get back, just sit, relax, be comfortable, because we're going to try to get through. By, and honey, by the way, if I'm going, if I'm rambling on too much with this tour, you stop me. Okay, you're, yeah. you're the, you're the um, ramble on police. So I'm going to get through, throw as much information as I can to you guys in the shortest amount of time. So let's just jump into this video. Okay, so let's start this tour up in Snake Room. This is 2.0. If you've been watching my channel, you know this is the room I built out probably about six months ago. These are brand new cages just arrived. These are boa file plastics cages. These are 322 Ds. They're 36 inches uh, long. They are 18 inches high and they are 24 inches deep. So what's going in here? These are gonna be, and you're gonna see all these animals shortly, but all the baby green tree pythons and now raising up in uh, tubs are all going to be going in these top cages. And the bottom cages, all my Eastern, all my green Sanzinia are going to be going in here. This whole room is primarily meant for my green Sanzinia and my diamond pythons. It's a cooler room than my other snake room. It runs at about 68 degrees, so it's a little cooler. I'll be able to get those animals down much cooler when I'm cycling to breed them. Um, as far as equipment, Again, boa file cages. Unfortunately, Jeff from boa file is still not making these cages. They are on hold until his health is back. Um, as far as the Sanzinia, the substrate here is going to be the cocoa chip. You're going to see cocoa chip in a lot of my enclosures. These cages have both radiant heat panels and they have belly heat. Whenever I have cages made, I always get both those options put in because at some point down the road, I may want to keep a terrestrial animal in here or an arboreal animal. And this way I can interchange the species without having to worry does that cage have a heat panel or not. So that's why I chose to do that. All the perches, you're going to hear this name a lot today, specialty enclosure designs. I'm going to put links in the bottom of these videos for all these 
uh, people who are the vendors and supply me with all this uh, equipment. By the way, there are no sponsors here. Nobody sponsors my videos. If I mention anybody like Specialty Enclosure Designs or Boafile or Helix, it's because I love the products and uh, they're not sponsors. But there's either a quarter inch purchase in here, half inch purchase, or one inch purchase, which would be for like a large emerald tree bow or a large Amazon basin emerald. Um, so that's the first rocket cages. These are all 36 inches. And again, Sanzinia going on the bottom. You're gonna see the Sanzinia shortly and you're gonna see the Chondros that are going in there here shortly. So those are eight brand new cages. That brings us down to this part of the room. Let me grab my hook. And these are also boa file cages. You'll see, everything's boa file, guys, because I had boa file forever. Um, if I were looking for cages right now, and since boa file is not making theirs, a company I absolutely love, and I love the people who run it, are Stephen and Ashley Howdy at Focus Cube Habitats. I would absolutely have them build a room out for me. And like I said, I, I love boa file cages. It's just that, plus I had Jeff's cages forever. I like everything that matches. You guys could see everything is very uniform in both my snake rooms. I just like that look. And uh, that's why I will always go with boa file. But again, a great option, an awesome option is focus cube habitats. And again, options will be on the bottom. So first, let's bring out some animals because you get tired of me babbling on. These are boa file 422 D cages. So what's the difference? It's 48 inches as opposed to 36 inches. The height's the same and the depth is the same, except these are 48 inches long. And with these, my diamond pythons, I have 1.2 pure diamond pythons. This is a reduced pattern female diamond python. I'm gonna put pictures of these animals up too because the lighting in these rooms does not do them justice. That is a 18 month uh, female. She's a reduced pattern diamond python. I have a trio of these and I have no belly heat in with my diamond pythons. There's no belly heat whatsoever. Um, there's only a hot spot that comes from the radiant heat panel, which is about 86 degrees. Diamond pythons, like a cooler. I did a whole video on diamond pythons. If you haven't seen it, please go check it out. I get into reduced pattern versus stardust diamond versus normal diamonds in different bloodlines. Um, this next animal in here is an animal I produced. This is a, this is a 75% diamond python. So why do I breed 75% diamond pythons? Because you get the pattern of the diamond, but then I'll take the gamma blood, the gamma jaguar blood, and breed it into the diamond. Next year, I'm going to make 88% diamond pythons. And you're getting what looks like a diamond python with the color of a gamma uh, jaguar um, carpet python. So it's the best of both worlds. So that's a 75% diamond girl. I produced her last year. And I don't think there's any problem with breeding diamonds that are just not pure animals, as long as you represent them honestly. That's what really what it comes down to. As far as substrate in these cages, I'll put a link on the bottom of these cages. This is just that corrugated paper. It's very thin. I love it. I have it cut custom made to each of these cages. And I like this for the larger animals better than pine shavings because it's just less messy. It doesn't go all in the water bowl. The animal defecates. I could take the whole sheet and I could just throw it out. So that's why I like those. So next up, again, these are all 48 inch cages over here. The same thing, boa file plastics. As you can see, I've purchased the boa file or the specialty enclosure design. These are one inch purchase in all these cages because these are larger animals and uh, carpet pythons will always utilize the purchase guys. So if you can give them that for some enrichment, I know they really enjoy and appreciate it. I'm using the hook because we're shooting this at night and my animals have a very strong feeding reaction. This is a Reduced pattern diamond jaguar python. I have babies from her right now and she's, I hope the color's showing up on her. She's a gorgeous animal. I love this girl. She gave me clutches the last two years. She actually produces my 75% diamond pythons and uh, hopefully she'll go for me next year as well. I bred her to a stardust male diamond python. So again, 48 inch enclosures and you can see this is a pretty nice size female and she fits very well in a 48 inch uh, enclosure. And like I did last year, you know what I wanna do? I wanna rate these animals for you too. I said one was the least difficult to keep, two was moderately difficult to keep, and three would be the most difficult to keep. Uh, I'd rate a diamond python two as far as, you know, somewhat difficult to keep just because of the requirements with the temperature. With the carpet pythons, I'll put them as a, at a one. If, you, or if uh, you've been keeping ball pythons or colubrids, I put them right at that difficulty level. Carpets are great pets. They don't get too big and they are not that difficult to keep. So they'd be a one. Um, what else do we have in here? This is a, oh, this is a really cool animal I wanna show you guys. This is the only one I know of in the world, and I'm gonna put a big, good picture of this up. This is actually an offspring of that Jaguar I just showed you. This is a 75% uh, reduced pattern or stardust uh, gamma jaguar. And I think it's the only one ever produced. I think Nick Mutton's gonna feature this animal in his book. Anyway, this is a really pretty animal. Great coloration on it. And again, the light's not doing justice and I'll put a picture of it. But there's another female that I'm raising up to breed. 
So I showed you guys some Jaguars. I showed you a diamond. I'm going to show you another diamond right now. This is, I'm not going to bring out every single animal. I'm going to show you a representation though of each of the species I'm keeping. This diamond, and guys, I'm so sorry if it sounds like I'm really hyping up my animals, but I've been doing this for a long time. And at this point, I really try to get my hands on the absolute top specimens I can just because I've had it all over the past 40 years. And this diamond just blows me away. And I'll put a picture of her up as well. This is, um, I don't know what the lineage of this animal is. It was sold to me as a, oh God, I can't think of the name right now. I'll think of it shortly, but that's a pure female diamond. She'll be ready to go for me next year. Um, oh, some, Gothenburg Zoo is what I bought her as, a Gothenburg Zoo diamond python. I've learned that line doesn't really exist. Um, but anyway, she's a pure diamond. She's phenomenal. I love her. Um, Martin Roseman, if you guys know Martin, he has a diamond to me that's comparable to this one, maybe even a little bit nicer than this girl, but I love this girl. That's another pure diamond python. And again, she has no belly heat whatsoever. The only heat in these cage come from the radiant heat panels. It's a hot spot of 86 degrees, and in this room, it allows her to go to a, the cool end, which is about 77, 78 degrees. And when I go to breed her, I'll bring her down to as low as I can get in this room, which in the winter, I could probably get it down to the low 60s, which will be really good. So let's put her hide box. Back, I get all these hide spots from the bean farm. They come in all different sizes. These are Neodesha hide spots. And again, as you can see, I pretty much keep everything uniform in every cage. So let's go to jungle carpets now. My female is in a shed. She's phenomenal. And here's my boy. And he just gave me, we have, I have a really nice clutch of uh, jungle carpets right now, babies, produced by this male. They have such a strong feeding response, my God. But you can see he is jet black. He's David Hasten's animal. The female is actually even nicer than him. But these are just a really nice pair of jungle carpets. And uh, difficulty level, guys, I'd say a number one on jungle carpets. It's just no different than any other carpet. Um, pretty easy to keep. You've been keeping ball pythons. You can keep a carpet python. I just get a little bit bigger. But I love this boy. And um, I think that pretty much wraps up. Oh, no. Wait. There's one more thing I want to show you guys. Hold on. In this room... I'm going to show you my first rack. This is an ARS rack. This is a hatchling rack. And so what do I love about ARS racks? I just, watch that stool, baby. Um, I just love the ARS racks. Uh, the other one, Freedom Breeder, I'm sure they're great as well. I just started with ARS racks, so I always went with them. So what do I have in here? This is where I need you guys to help me out. As far as when I put my animals for sale, everything sells so fast, you guys spoil me, so thank you so much. But the thing that does not sell fast for me are boas and ball pythons. I'm just not known for breeding those animals, but these were produced by a friend of mine, and these are albino boas. These are sharp strain. Here's one of them right here, just beautiful little babies. It's a, yeah, it's a sharp strain albino, feeding great on frozen thawed. And if you can go to GS Reptiles, dot com on my website they're also on morph market as well there's a, is that a sun glow yeah it's a sun glow female again these are sharp strain eating like champs beautiful animals super tame super mellow difficulty level on, on boa constrictors is a one just that they get a, a little bit larger right i mean a male will easily hit about five foot and a female can get up to six and a half foot maybe even bigger if you really pump the hell out of them but if you go to gs reptiles or yeah gsreptiles.com you will see all the baby boas on there. I will do free shipping on singles or pairs. And if you want pairs, make me offers on pairs because I'd love to get the numbers down on these right now before it gets too cold to ship. I think that wraps up Snake Room 2.0. So why don't we now, you know, I want to show you guys actually, let's do the unboxing with the new green snakes I just got and I'll be right back. Okay, who doesn't love a good unboxing? I know I'm particularly pumped to open up this box for you guys. I think you're all gonna, being arboreal enthusiasts, I think you're all gonna really love what's in here. Um, hey, the gentleman who produced these animals, I wanna give him full credit. If you watch my channel, you know I love giving people full credit, um, but he's just a low key guy. He prefers to stay out of the limelight. And uh, I just, he produced actually 33 babies last year, so he killed it. Um, if I were him, I'd be like blabbing everywhere. I'd produce 33 babies, but he just wants to lay low. He's a hobbyist, so thank you so much. You know who you are, and thank you for trusting with your babies. And uh, secondly, I couldn't get packages like this if it wasn't for, you know, my OnlyFans member. So you guys know who you are, so uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, yeah, some of you are so naughty, but anyway, I'm blushing. Anyway, let's open up this box see what we got in here. And if you watch my channel, I'll give you a couple hints. So I got four of these a few months ago. 
And I also have another one that's an adult female out on breeding loan. So I have right now five total. So I'm adding these four more to my group. And let's check them out. And if they look half as good as they did in the pictures, I'm going to be super, super happy. Packing, paperwork, and yeah. So these are pretty amazing, guys. These are year old. These are, uh, I'm going to unpack them in a little bit, so I'll show you them uh, a lot better in their enclosures. But that is a year old Amazon Basin Emerald, and hopefully you could see it really well. It defecated while it was in transport, which, you know what, that's a great sign to me. I love when they're all nice and cleaned out. Now I know I could feed them in, in a four or five days or so after they settle in. Here's another one, really pretty, still going through the onogenic color change. You can see a lot of red scales in there, so they're only going to get a lot better. That's the one thing about basins. You can get babies that sometimes have hardly any stripe on them, and they'll really surprise you as they go through the onogenic color change. They get a lot of white scales in. Uh, here's another one, number three. And these are unsexed, so I have no idea if these are males or females. We're going to go through and probe everything in a month or so from now and see exactly what we got. That's why I bought the group, guys, honestly, because I wanted to make sure I got a good sex ratio. And that's why I bought the first four also, because I want to make sure that, um, you know, I didn't get stuck with, if I bought one or two, I'd, my luck, I'd get all males. So I wanted to make sure I got a, between the eight animals now that are a year old, uh, my goal is to hold back 2.2 or 2.3 of the nicest ones. And I'm going to make available the rest of them after they're all, again, probed out. So, and there's the fourth one. And again, just one has really nice crossbars to it. Just a really pretty animal. Hopefully you could see that really well. So I'm going to get these guys all cleaned up out of these transport containers and get them in their new enclosures. And I'll be right back and you guys can check them out with me. So here we are in snake room 1.0, the original snake room. And here are those Amazon Basin Emeralds that you just saw arrive. They arrived roughly about a week ago. Uh, and now I have them in the Cambro tubs. I use water as a substrate on these. The hot spot in here is about 84.5 to 85 degrees in the back of the tub towards the front of the tub. It's about 81 degrees. It's not that much of a variation. The tubs aren't that big. Again, water is a substrate. It keeps humidity nice and high. And um, yes, yeah, so you can see these basins and just how pretty they are. And I'm going to get these a few meals in them after the next few weeks. And then I'll probe them all and see exactly what I have. And as I mentioned earlier, I'll, I'll probably make a few of these available. I'll keep you guys posted on that. Um, so let's show this last one here. Let we show that one already. So this is... Um, I want to show you guys now the Cambro tub because I get more questions on this Cambro uh, tub rack than any other piece of equipment in my room when I do my videos. This was originally made by PVC Plastics, Jim Sharphorn. Um, Jim no longer is in business. He doesn't make these uh, Cambro tubs anymore, but you know who does? Again, I'm going to go back to Focus Cube Habitats. They make a really nice Cambro tub hanger. And for raising arboreals, I am not a big proponent of tubs, guys. I just don't think you enjoy the animals as much when they're in tubs. That's just my personal opinion. But I would never consider raising a baby green tree python or a baby emerald any other way than keeping them in tubs. Once they're in, they reach past the year to 18 month point. I love putting them in an enclosure, but tubs are great. So again, Cambro tubs, water is a substrate on these guys. And these are specialty enclosure design perches. As always, you'll see in all my cages. And I'm gonna go into why when I'm showing you the baby carpet pythons, why I think these perches are just so important to have with baby arboreals. But again, that's the Cambro rack tub. These are all the new basins. There's four more basins up here. Uh, yearling basins in these tubs. And then I also have, I'll show you really quickly here. We'll pull out. Also in the same rack, these are some baby, they're, baby Manaquari green tree pythons I'm also raising in this rack. And there's four of these as well. I currently have seven of these baby Manaquari green trees. These were actually, I got these back in January and they were brought in. I bought the whole clutch from Indonesia and just great little babies. So that's the Cambro tubs. These are some more Manaquari chondros I'm raising and let's just continue on with this room tour. Okay, let's start small in this room and then we'll work our way up. So let's start with this hatchling rack. Uh, this is a boa file hatchling rack. They no longer make this rack, unfortunately. Again, I get questions on this rack all the time. Um, so what do I keep in here? As soon as my babies hatch out, whether it's green tree pythons or carpet pythons, baby savu pythons, I put them in one of these two small racks, the shoebox rack on them. So here, I'm going to show you a couple quick animals. I just showed you those jungle carpets in the other room, the male. And this is one of their babies. And it's just a really pretty, that's going to be a pretty black and jet uh, jet black and bright yellow babies. One has a bunch of meals in it. I'm going to start posting these on Morph Market. The reason I have not done that yet is because they're still on live fuzzy mice. I don't really consider them uh, established the carpet pythons until I get them on frozen thaw. That's why I haven't really posted. I do have one male posted right now. It's on frozen thawed rat pinks, but um, 
that's all I really have posted. Here's a baby, it's a buddy of mine produced some baby albino. These are pure Darwin albino carpets from Phenomenal Parents. I just posted two on Morph Market. They sold pretty quickly. I'm gonna get these posted, but I'm still getting these established. I have two females I'm getting ready to go. And again, these are all uh, Helix thermostats. I have, I couldn't even tell you, probably about 26 thermostats between both rooms running. Um, now we could jump over here. This is an ARS 5020 rack. Once the baby carpets, they start getting a little bit bigger. I, well, you'll see the second. I move them from basically a baby rack to a, a 12 quart Rubbermaid rack, and then I'll move them into this 5020 rack ARS. Um, I love this rack. And so what do I keep in here? Here's, I'm gonna show you your first ball pythons. I only have three ball pythons. That's one of them right there. These are, het, these are uh, I love the Xanthic stuff. And these are the uh, MJ Xanthic out of Canada. So basically the goal is to produce some uh, Xanthic, what they call a lightning pie. So that's one of the females. Here's another one of the females, Xanthic, or het for Xanthic pied female. She's larger. So she's a pretty girl. And then also, this is one of my holdback carpets. Whenever I produce animals, guys, and I breed stuff, you know, I don't do this for a living. This is purely a hobby for me. My goal is basically, because you guys can see, between animals and cages, I literally, I couldn't tell you what I have spent. Tens and tens of thousands of dollars invested, and, but every dime of it comes from the animals I breed. That's the good news. So I don't do this for a living, but the important thing for me is that I want my hobby to support itself, whether it's feed and equipment and snakes, and that's, that's always been my goal. But with that goal, I always only want to produce stuff that I'm really interested in, stuff that I don't breed things to just to make money. It's the God's honest truth. I just don't do that. Um, anytime I breed something, it's because I really am dying to see what the outcome is going to be. Um, this particular animal is a 75% reduced pattern diamond python I produced uh, this past season. And there were seven babies total in the clutch. She's the only one held back, was the only female reduced pattern, and she's going to be phenomenal. And again, that's what it's about for me, producing stuff that, um, that I really like to, in, in most cases, I'll usually hold back, depending on the species, at least one or two babies from every clutch. That's a lot of the fun for it, or a lot of the fun of it for me. So let's get that back. And now why don't we jump over here to incubators. Nature Spirit incubators, guys. They still make them today. Helix thermostats. I love Nature Spirit. I love any incubator where you can have a viewing window because if you have to open up the door and lift up a lid to check on your eggs, you're always changing the parameters of the heat and humidity. So my suggestion would be always get an incubator. I use the Cambro box tubs. You can, whatever tub you're using, it really doesn't matter. Um, as long as it, it, you know, you could see through it and you could see through the glass of the incubator and you could see right in your tub to see the eggs. That's the key thing for me. Another question I get all the time, where do you place your thermostat probe in your incubator. It sounds like you would keep it in the egg box itself, right? That would make the most sense. You have your probe right next to your, in your eggs, in the egg box. That's actually not the correct way to do it. The correct way to do it is, again, I know people are going to argue with me out there that they've been doing it for that way for years and they have success. God bless. That's great. There are many ways to skin a cat, but the, I think the most effective way, uh, least risk resistant way is I put my probe right in front of my fan which is getting maximum circulation. I do not put my probe inside my heat chain, inside my egg box. That's just the way I do it. But again, Helix incubators, I've probably had these running for, I mean, realistically 12 years, something in that, to that effect. Um, these are the kitty litter pans I use in my water tubs for all of my um, arboreal animals. Um, we're gonna go into those shortly. And this is a sea serpent's rack. As you can see, I am, you guys can see I'm out of space, right? This is a sea serpent's rack. And right now, I love these racks. See, as much as I love the ARS racks for keeping, you know, once the animals start getting bigger and established, as far as keeping humidity in, when it comes to baby uh, Savu pythons and baby green tree pythons, baby emerald tree boas, baby basin tree boas, I love these racks because they keep the humidity in far better than an ARS rack ever could. I would never put a baby chondro in an ARS rack, okay? So this is one of my baby Savus from last year. And you can see how nice and big it's actually getting. This is a het silver female. And that's just a beautiful animal. They're always a little jumpy, but you could just go right in at them and take them out. But yeah, it's a beautiful little girl. She's gonna strike at the camera, I bet. That's, that's, a, that's a normal Savu. Even though it's het for silver, it's still a normal pairing. So let's show you what a baby Savu, silver Savu looks like. And uh, these are super rare still in US collections, guys. Um, and silver Savu, it's just a different way of saying it's an Xanthic is basically what it is. 
and they're all from the island of Sabu, which is a small island, so actually it's, it's a naturally occurring morph, okay, uh, the silvers or the exantics. The entire Sabu island, I want to say, is 10 miles long by 6 miles wide. It's not big, so I'm sure there's a lot of inbreeding going on, so they're just, again, a naturally occurring form, but you can see a difference in the silver, and this animal is just going to get a lot prettier as it gets bigger. And ironically, I will tell you that the silver, the visual silvers, for whatever reason, as babies especially, they're so much more calm than the normal Sabus. Uh, Savu is always put on a good bluff when you're going to the enclosures, always doing a lot of striking. Um, but as soon as you pick them up, they stop striking. But these are awesome animals. I love Savu pythons more than, say, the brown water pythons or the Maclots pythons because, unlike those animals, these actually stay really small. I'm going to show you my adults shortly. Um, I produced 22 babies last year. This year I only produced five. Um, which I'm really proud of because these have really been disappearing in the pet trade, so I'm able to get them into the hands of a lot of capable keepers. But, um, yeah, just not a lot of these around, and uh, hopefully next year I'm going to be able to produce a lot more. And I start these on live fuzzy mice, and that's usually what gets them going. And I keep them humid because the thing I learned about Savu pythons last year is if you don't keep them humid enough, like a green tree python or an emerald, they will prolapse. You need to keep the humidity levels up. So those are baby sal uh, Savu pythons. I'm going to be making... Two silver males available in the next few weeks, and I'm going to be making a normal het silver male available in, in the coming weeks as well. Okay, so now we move up to the 7010 racks. These are more ARS racks. And uh, so what do I keep in these? I keep bull pythons and sabu pythons. Racks get a bad name in the hobby, guys. I know a lot of people, they call it like, you know, factory farming. Uh, the racks to me are the most practical thing you can use. I mean, they really give an animal security. Do I love them as far as pure aesthetics go? No, I love to see my animals. So as soon as I can, um, I move my animals from racks into enclosures where I can really enjoy them and see them. But with certain species, again, I go back to ball pythons and savu pythons, I couldn't imagine really keeping them in anything but racks. They just thrive, they do so well. Anyway, with that said, let's show you guys. This is a silver savu python i produced last year this is a male silver savu and uh, they typically strike when you get them out and then they calm down but so that's a silver male not as pretty as his mom but a really pretty hope he's showing up well on camera because he's really nice and silver exantic i love these guys and you can see he's it's an awesome animal currently working with about 10 savu pythons and I'm really focusing on the silvers because as rare as normals are, silvers are even tougher to come by. That's one of my silvers. Let's show you this is what a normal looks like. This is just a normal male. This guy's been a great breeder for me. And again, and I just don't even hesitate, guys. I go right in to pick him up. A full-grown Savu Python male will get about um, three feet, as you can see. As far as difficulty level on a Savu Python, just because they're a little jumpy and they tend to be strikers and they require a little bit of humidity, I would put them as a two, a level two as far as difficulty. I forgot about the basin emeralds before. Basin emeralds because, again, they're arboreals. They have special heat and humidity requirements as far as, you know, they could just, it's just that they, it's a more advanced snake for a more advanced keeper. Um, if you've been keeping animals for years, you know, the funny thing I always think about is, you know, you could be keeping snakes, you know, boas and ball pythons and carpets for many years. You get into green tree pythons or emerald tree boas, as much experience you, as you have, a lot of it, unfortunately, does not transfer over to the arboreals. So that's why with the arboreals, I always rate that more as a three. I'm not trying to dissuade anybody from getting them. They're amazing animals, but there is a learning curve with arboreals, so just keep that in mind. That's just a beautiful male, normal Savu python. This guy's probably about eight or nine years old, a great breeder for me all kept on cocoa chips. And the reason I do that with them is because, don't worry, honey, he's not gonna get you. My wife, as long as she's been doing this with me, she does not like snakes and she still gets nervous. So that's that. So let's take out a silver female, one of my adult silver females that actually produced the baby that I showed you earlier. Here's a really pretty silver girl. And you can see how pretty she is how different she is than the normal male. So that's just a silver savu. This is a full-grown male, guys. And again, they stay small. Like, I, was, I think I lost my train of thought earlier. They stay smaller than the other pythons I'd mentioned, the uh, Maclots pythons or the Fuscus pythons. What's cool about them is they go through an onogenic color change, and they're born that terracotta orange. Even the silver ones, they lose a lot of that silver, and they get a lot of pixelation in there. They stay, anything that stays small goes through an onogenic color change, I'm totally on board. I just love those two, you know, those two factors. So that is a silver Savu Python female. And these are awesome. And I hope to really get a lot more of them into the hands of other hobbyists over the years. It's a project I'm really concentrating on right now. Um, so let's 
get her away. And let's show you what else is in this, in these tubs. And this is again, the ARS 7010 racks, perfect for ball pythons. A little pro tip for you guys, whenever I'm keeping racks together, um, I just usually put the, uh, what do you call these? The, the plumbing things, I can't think of them right now. The straps, the plastic straps on there. Um, and I keep the racks together. So if I move them, they move together because these are two separate racks. Next, I'm gonna show you guys, this is a really, really unique animal I produced last year. This is a, this is a reduced pattern, a 75% diamond. That's also a defecated in its enclosure. Of course, I cleaned everything yesterday, but look how pretty this animal is. And that is a 75% reduced pattern um, diamond python. And I just love that animal. And that's from the female, adult female jaguar I showed you guys earlier. And uh, actually, he's going to a good friend of mine's house. I'm going to give him to him. And we're going to breed him with, I'll put a picture up right now, of his gamma jaguar female. So if you see what she looks like in the picture. And this boy, they should produce some pretty amazing offspring. And again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm always looking to breed stuff that not just for the sake of breeding stuff that I want to hold on to. So I'm going to shut the door right now. And you want to come around over here? So this is a 12 quart, this tub rack, this was built by my friend, John Martin. This, this, this system is probably about 30 years old and I'm not exaggerating, but again, it's just standard four inch flex watt heat tape in the back, all heat thermostats. Um, this is my baby rack for, for uh, my um, carpets. Uh, as they get bigger, they grow out of the shoebox racks. Once I establish them in the shoebox rack, I go ahead and I put them in the 12 quarts and eventually they'll go into the ARS, but that's just a really, I know they look like nothing now. That's a little, this girl actually is available. She's on Morph Micro right now. She's Jag F-05. And she's the result of breeding um, that beautiful Jaguar female I showed you guys earlier and a, uh, a Stardust male diamond. That's incredible. And she's the result of that. So I have a male, a female and two males um, available on these. And what else can I show you guys that's in here? Anything different? Just, uh, here's a cool, another cool Jaguar. This is Jag male 07. He's currently on Morph Market right now. Look how pretty that animal is. I can't believe I sold so many uh, Jaguars and this guy didn't find his new home yet, but I'm sure he will. But beautiful little baby. So that's that rack. And temperatures, guys, for these. And if you notice, I'm keeping shredded aspen with these animals. Um, it, I like it. It keeps the humidity in a little bit. Um, I don't have to, you know, I could spot clean and I spot clean every single enclosure with every animal every single morning, guys. I really do. So um, I like the Aspen for spot cleaning. It just makes things a lot easier. And temperatures are running in here on the hot spot, probably about 84, 85 degrees. And always on the cooler end, probably like 79 to 81 degrees, depending on the time of the day. So that's that rack. And you know what? Let's take a quick, let me take a quick breath. And then we're going to go through the rest of these arboreal cages. Moving onward, more... Uh, Boa file cages. These are the uh, 322Ds again, same ones you saw earlier in the other snake room. Um, I love these uh, for the Sanzinia as well. And just so you guys know, this whole rack of Sanzinia cages, all the Sanzinia that are in here, the Madagascar tree boas. If you haven't watched my channel before, I know I mentioned Sanzinia. It's like everybody's going to know them. There are they're called actually Madagascar tree boas. There are two types. There's an eastern phase and a western phase. The westerns are the mandarins. They get bigger. The eastern phase are more difficult to come by. They don't get as big and they prefer a cooler temperature, which is why all the Sanzinia, I currently have a group of two males and three female green Sanzinia. Uh, they are all going into the cooler room and these four cages right now, once I get those Amazon Basin Emeralds uh, probed out, they are all going to go in these enclosures on quarter inch perches. And these cages also have radiant heat panels in every single one of them for the basins. So let's take out some green Sanzinia. You guys love Sanzinia, I know you do. I put this female in here just because to take her out, but this is one of my female green Sanzinia. I did not have any luck breeding them last year, guys, but I'm going to tell you, my concentration this year are on um, Savu pythons and green Sanzinia. I just know I'm going to hit the green Sanzinia this year. Just keep your fingers crossed for me. This is one of my females. You can just see how pretty she is and how lime green she is. This is an adult female, guys. They don't really get much bigger than this. This animal is probably about four and a half to five foot. She's a gorgeous girl. So I have three different bloodlines. This is one of them. And I'm gonna show you the other two now because even though they're all green Sanzinia, there's a lot of variation in the color itself. The one I'm showing you right now happens to be my most favorite is that lime green coloration to her. She does not stay in the rack. I just put her in the rack because it would be easier to get her out of the rack. 
and get her out of her enclosure um, because she'll bring a bunch of cocoa chips with her and uh, I keep them on cocoa chips because with the cocoa chips, again, I can keep the humidity level up. So let's take out this girl in here, completely unrelated to that female. And they all have their perches and they will utilize them. And this is another female green Sanzinia and she is a 2020. So she's only two years old and you can see how pretty she is as well. Hope the color's showing up on her. Again, not as pretty as the other one, but just a beautiful snake. And these go through an onogenic color change as well. These are born as red babies. Amazing animals. As far as difficulty level, guys, I'm gonna tell you they're, they're like a one. They're not really difficult to keep at all. They're super difficult to come by as far as a difficulty level to obtain them. I put them at a difficult level of 10. I'd love to get my hands on a few more myself. But um, anyway, I have 2.3 I'm working with. I'm really happy about that size group. And let's take out the last female which is a different coloration than the first two I just showed you. And that's why I love these specialty enclosure design perches, guys, because not only do they clean really easily, but every size is interchangeable in the, in the enclosure. So when I want to move animals around or I get new animals around, I can use any enclosure I want. I just pick the right size perch for them, and every cage is uniform, and that's, that's the beauty of it. It just makes life so much easier. And this is a third bloodline, Green Sanzini. I thought this female was gravid. I thought I saw her ovulate this year. I really did, but apparently I'm wrong because there's nothing out of her. But she's a really pretty girl. She was off of feed, everything. She seemed to be doing everything right. But at the end of the day, I didn't get anything from her. So it really doesn't matter. She's holding on to her birch. These are actually very sweet animals too. You can see how pretty she is. Beautiful, deep green coloration. And again, these are Eastern. Madagascar tree boas, Madagascar sanziniensis, just beautiful snakes. So that's the 2.3 of those. And let's get her put back. And uh, now let's just jump into some northern emeralds and some green tree pythons. And before I go on, guys, could you do me a favor, please? If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Please like this video. And more importantly, as I'm going through this tour, if there's any questions, anything I'm not covering, you have a question on, please put it in the comments down below. I'll be happy to answer for you. Also, please follow me on Instagram because I try to do as many updates as I can, you know, in the videos, but I don't make the videos as often as I post to Instagram. As far as things for sale and updates, I put everything on Instagram and on Facebook. Since, but since I'm pretty much out of space on Facebook at this point with new friends, just go to my Instagram at GS Reptiles and I keep everything updated there, especially availability. Um, so let's get into uh, Green Tree pythons right now in Emerald Tree Boas. As far as the caging, it's that same consistent caging, guys. It's boa file 322Ds, 18 inches high, uh, 24 inches deep, 36 inches wide. Um, as far as green tree pythons and males of either species of Amazon basins or northern emeralds, it's they're perfect size cages, okay, the 18 inches high. But I'll tell you the truth, if I have the, uh, if it's a large female basin or a large northern basin female, um, I really do think you need to go higher than 18 inches as um, I just, so at some point I may have to go higher in my caging down the road as my animals continue to grow. Because I'm gonna show you a couple larger northern uh, emeralds that they're almost starting to get too big for the 18 inches high. I have the 48 inch enclosure, I can easily put them in that, but I still don't have the height. So um, as far as perch sizing guys for green tree pythons, I'll tell you, you very rarely, I start after the hatchling racks, I put them on the quarter inch perches, but they're a good 18, 14 to 18 months in that area before I'm gonna go ahead and put them on these quarter inch perches. And maybe at a large female chondro, I put it on a half inch perch, but other than that with chondros, you really never have to go above a half inch perch. Same thing with really with the northerns, anything above a half inch perch, it would have to be an enormous animal. They actually prefer thinner perches, okay? So let's keep that in mind when you're setting up your adult enclosures. And again, on the bottom of mine, I keep all the cocoa chip. Uh, you can see all my enclosures are set up the same way. I got a heat spot in here of about 83 to 84 degrees on the hot spot for my green tree pythons. All cocoa chip on the bottom because I could spray it down. I could keep it nice and humid. And I keep a large kitty litter pan off to the side filled with water. I spot check every one of my animals, guys, every single day. So if an animal defecates in that water every single morning, it is cleaned out. Um, what else can I tell you? And the, the, the ironic thing is, you know, you say, okay, did I get the biggest kitty litter pan I could fit in my cage? Well, truth be told is there are bigger ones I could fit in these cages. But I actually measured these to the bottom of my sink. So this actually fits in the bottom of my sink basin perfectly so I could really scrub it. I could have gotten bigger ones that would have fit in my cages, but then they wouldn't have fit in my sink. And I want to really scrub them out really well. And I always change them out. So bottom line is that I have duplication of everything. So if this water bowl is dirty or just needs to be changed every five or six days, that's how often I do it. I try to do it as much as I can, but 
it's, it, it takes me almost two full days to get through both of these rooms at this point to really scrub everything down. But I have duplication of everything. So literally, I'll take this dish out, I'll dump the water, I put a brand new in, one in that's been sitting dry for at least a week, and I'll fill that one with fresh water, and the old one will then be clean and then sit for an entire week by itself as well. Okay, so let's take some of these green tree pythons out for you. These are all locality of Manaquari locality. I produce just about every one of these animals. You can see how pretty they are outside of their enclosures. This animal is a 2020. This is a female uh, Manaquari. You can see she's just a really pretty girl. This is a red Neo. I'm going to take another one out for you here. And again, I know I'm repeating myself, but any size perch, as these animals grow, if I want to put in a larger size perch, Thanks to David Brahms' specialty enclosure designs, all I have to do is stick a larger, thicker perch in there, but everything, all the other dimensions are the same. How pretty is that girl as well? You just cannot get a sense of how pretty these animals are until you get them out of their enclosures. But she's uh, another 2020 uh, Manaquari girl, completely unrelated to the other one that's in there. I'm raising up about, mm, about 11 female Manaquaris right now. That'll be ready in the next two years, because uh, as you guys know, looking for this locality stuff, there's such a shortage of it, it's not really being brought in anymore. So, that's that. These are, I'm going to show, move over. These are all the same closures. I have 28 total of these 36-inch enclosures. I want to take out for you guys now and just show you is, um, this is, I've been raising these since babies. How pretty is this? Northern Emerald. I have uh, two sisters, the other one's in her enclosure, but she looked like she just wanted to take my face off so I didn't pull her out, but she's a Northern Emerald. This is, God, I forget the year on this female. Right, let me take a look. But I probably still need another two years of growth on her. She was born in two, um, December of 2018. She was an imported baby. Um, actually, she was, it was an imported female that was grabbing in, in the, had birth, had six live babies, and I held back two of the sisters. But, God, she's beautiful. She's kicking butt, and I love northern emeralds. So where would I put them on a difficulty scale? Northern's definitely a three. I would tell you, out of Amazon basins, northern emeralds and green tree pythons, I think, personally, northern emeralds are the most tricky to keep. Um, these guys, knock on wood, have been problem-free, but they tend to be uh, prone to uh, regurgitation uh, emeralds in general, not the basins. Basins of those three are probably the least... Um, difficult to keep. But again, everything is relative, right? If you have arboreal experience, none of them are overall that difficult to keep. But if you're brand new into arboreals, I would say northern emeralds are the most challenging of those three animals. Basin emeralds, northern emeralds, and chondros, I would say northern emeralds are the most challenging to keep. I would say Amazon basin emeralds are the least challenging to keep. They're just dream animals. Probably my most favorite species of snake. As much as I love green tree pythons, and that's definitely where my passion is. If I could only keep one snake, I've said this before, it would be Amazon Basin Emeralds. There's nothing to me more impressive than an adult Amazon Basin Emerald. I'm going to take this girl out for you, too. This girl is coming up on 19 years old, guys. She was a captive hatched baby in Indonesia. I've had her since a baby. And this is a Arfak girl. They used to call them Arfaks. Now we call them Manaquaris, but it's Morelia Pulcher. Yeah, so she's coming up on 19 years old. Um, I've read her for the last few years. She's no longer producing eggs for me. She's just a sweet pet, and I've had her, and I love her. And she'll just stay with me until eventually she dies off. But who knows how that could be. I have no idea how long she's going to live. Hopefully I'll get another 10 years out of her. That'd be pretty amazing for a green tree python especially. And every week what I do is, like I said, I'm every five, six days actually scrubbing the tubs down, misting down the enclosures. And just by misting down this mulch, it'll keep, the, um, it'll keep them pretty humid for a solid, you know, almost a full week until they get cleaned again. But if they defecate in the enclosure or they defecate in their water basins, it's clean that morning. It's another pretty man aquari. This is a male, captive red and born male. If you can see the color on him, he's just a really pretty animal. He'll be a future breeder male for me. So I'm working with about, I, I want to say roughly, has it, is it coming in clear, babe? Okay, good. About 18, 19 um, total man aquari chondros, so a nice group of those put together. And let's show you guys one more. And just take one more out for you. It's a really pretty female in here. It's a really nice blue tour. Hopefully she shows up on camera. 
And you can see how pretty she is. She, again, she's a 2020 female, red baby. Yeah, just a really pretty girl. Solid feeders, everybody's on frozen thought. No live feeders. All right. Okay, hon, let's go. Honey, I am exhausted. That was, a lo that was a lot of babbling on my part. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This is video number 40. That's pretty crazy. We started this channel about two and a half years ago. We're at video number 40. So thanks so much for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing all the time and supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. Um, so what's the goal here? Is, oh, you know what I wanted to tell you guys is that when you see my collection, you see all the animals, keep in mind, it's taken me a lifetime to put this collection together. Don't expect to build Rome in a day. It takes time. You know, take, enjoy it. Don't, we're always pursuing the next animal. Always, I always tell people, try to enjoy what you have and not focus on the next animal you're getting. And the other thing, I've definitely, it's been my experience that oftentimes the less animals I have, the more animals I tend to produce. It's like when you can be more focused, you tend to be more successful and produce more animals. Um, so I'll leave you with those words of wisdom. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see everybody in Tinley. And as always, uh, US Ark, uh, they do so much for us and ask so little for us. So please continue to support US Ark. And I will see you guys hopefully in the next two weeks, maybe three weeks. Bye. Who has the best YouTube channel? Me?